frantic times. ending it all, then why not give me a call here at Suicide Watch? I'm Roland Grit. I care. I really do. Suicide Watch is brought to you by Manfred's Irradiated Chili. The chili in the asbestos can. A soul in distress is calling us now. Suicide Watch, you're on the air. Hello, Mr. Grit. My name is Hugh Beaumont. Uh, weren't you the father on Leave it to Beaver? Oh, no, no. I, I'm the kid from the high school computer room. Oh. I just phoned to say hello to my grandpa and grandma Beaumont, who always listen to your show. Is that all? Oh, no. I, I almost forgot. I'm going to commit suicide by jumping into the computer paper shredder. Wait, wait, wait. I know what you're going through. You're, you're a computer buff, right? Right. You're one of those geeky kids with glasses and pimples who knows so much computer jargon that no one understands a word he says. Verified. Right, and you're a diehard Star Trek fan. Beam me up, Scotty. Well, I can understand why you'd want to kill yourself. Oh, no, no, that, that's not why. I, I like being the way I am. Oh, thank goodness. I couldn't think of a convincing reason for you to go on. I, I want to take Carlotta Scapula to the high school dance, but... But she won't go out with me. <laughs> Why not? Oh, I didn't ask her. Uh, she's playing hard to get, is she? Well, without her, my life is meaningless. Hey, hey, don't be silly. You've always got um, uh, bits and bytes and uh, modems and uh, terminals. Oh, but without her, those are just meaningless words. Yeah, I know what you mean. And, and, and that's why I'm turning on the paper shredder. Goodbye, Roland. No, no, you, wait, wait. Why don't you just call her up? Well, I, I try, but my whole hand starts to vibrate uncontrollably when I get near a phone. Well, then I'll, I'll call her up for you. Don't worry. Your suicide attempt will impress her. Take it from me, kid. You can go a long way on pure sympathy. Oh, oh you mean you'll phone her for me? Sure, right after this word from Manfred. <laughs> Billy, sit down. Your chili's ready. Gee, Mom, your chili's never hot enough for me. Well, I bet this will be. It's Manfred's irradiated chili. It sends this Geiger counter off the scale. Wow. It's so good. Every chili bean is deformed. (laughs) And it's only one-tenth the price of regular chili for some reason. Great. I can wash it down with Manfred's Agent Orange Juice. Don't tell your kids it's good for them. They'll never trust you again. Manfred, chili is the hottest yet. Strontium 90 makes it taste so great. It's Manfred, hold it in your hand. It makes you sweat. Let that tasty fall off of your plate. It's Manfred. It's good. just gotta be, and she's just gotta. I'm sure she will. Hello? Hello, Carlotta Scapula. Do you know a Hugh Beaumont? The father on Leave it to Beaver? Uh, no, no. <laughs> From school. Oh, the cute little one with the glasses. She thinks I'm cute. Is this you, Hugh? No, this is Roland Grit. From Suicide Walk? Yeah. I love your show. It gives me shivers. Oh. What about me? Did I win a lucky date with you, Roland? Oh, boy. Well, no, actually, I'm, I'm phoning about uh, Hugh. I've always uh, dreamed of meeting the man behind the voice. Yes? And I'm free for a date. No one asked me to go to the school dance. Well, I would have. Well, maybe we could meet for dinner. How do, how do they say? Oh, I'd love it. I'm turning on the paper shredder. Gee, that sounds like it'd be really great. What's that noise? Oh, that? Um, that's static from the other line. I'll get rid of it. Oh, I can hardly wait, well, Roland. Just hang on while I sign off here. Well, that's all for this week for Suicide Watch. This is Roland Grit saying, Life is worth living if you take the time to look around you and grasp the opportunities. This show has been brought to you... Oh, I forget. My hands are shaking too much. I gotta go. Bye. We came to this suburban shopping mall and asked shoppers to compare Wrinkles potato chips to the leading brand. Try this potato chip, Mrs. Sarnicki. 
yuck, patooey. This tastes like a rotting pine cone that a skunk in heat sat on. Now try this chip. My taste buds are turning cartwheels up and down my throat. Are they crunchier? The difference is like the difference between the Earth's crust and the late Vivian Vance. How would you describe these potato chips? Imagine the greatest achievements in the arts, humanities, and literature. Now, put them in a cellophane bag and add salt and vinegar. Would you like another one? Would I? Would I? Would Jackie Gleason's tailor like a day off? <laughs> would you? Yes, please. Well, here yes, you. wrinkles potato chips are so crunchy, even Mrs. Sarnicki likes them. They're better than self-awareness. <laughs> Good morning, Loretta. Good morning, Daddy. Oh, oh, my knee. <laughs> You're just in time. I was making toast. Oh, no, Daddy, I'll make it here. Huh? Oh, the toaster. Well, that's, that's okay. I'd rather have plain bread. Oh. Come on, dear. Oh. <laughs> Careful. Sit down. So, are you excited, Loretta? About what, Daddy? Your high school Christmas dance tonight. Oh, right. Well, about the dance, I don't think I'll be going, Daddy. I'm not much of a dancer. You're a wonderful dancer. You always dance with me. You always wear steel-toed shoes. Well, what about this uh, Kip Stanley? Who? This boyfriend you've been telling me about. Won't he be disappointed? Oh, him. Oh, uh, Kip. Well, he broke up with me, you know. Just before the dance? Well, that's not very nice. I think I'll just phone up this Kip Stanley boy and give him a piece of my mind. <laughs> Don't you dare! Careful! Oh, boy. <laughs> he doesn't even know I exist. What? Oh, Daddy, I'm so embarrassed. Kit Stanley isn't my boyfriend. He's just a guy on the gymnastics team. But you told your mother and me. Oh, I know, but I only said that to make you happy. I see. Yeah. Well, still, one of your other friends from school could take you out? I don't have any other friends. They all call me klutz. How can they say that? Well, well, oh, careful. the face. I'll, I'll wipe it no, up. No, just leave that there. You'll oh. lock the table otherwise. <laughs> well, h how about the debating club? Well, there's no one on the debating club beside me and Hugh Barfbag Beaumont. Ward Cleaver on Leave It to Beaver? No, his middle name wasn't Barfbag. Oh. Well, couldn't you go out with this boy, Hugh? Oh, please. I'd rather go shopping for bras with my mother. Now, Loretta, what's wrong with this Hugh? Oh, only that he's got four eyes, and he's the bench boy for the football team, and he does the lights for the drama club, and he's into computers. Now, Loretta, hmm? Well, that's what they say. Anyways, I wouldn't go out with Hugh if he was the last boy on earth. But your mother's going to be disappointed. She's already made that nice dress for you. Well, I told her not to. Well, it was no bother. There was all that material left over from the couch you broke. <laughs> Oh, somebody at the door. I'll get it. Oh, no, Daddy, let me get it. Well, careful. Ah! Oh, it, 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 oh, mind that. All right. Oh, sorry. Um. Uh, uh hi, Loretta. <laughs> oh, Hugh, you're all cut up. Oh, well, I had an accident with the school paper shredder. <laughs> well, what, what happened to you? Oh, I had an accident with the toaster and the vase and the door and the coffee table. <laughs> oh, well... Well, well, I was thinking, and, and, I, uh, and I was really down, and, and then I thought of you, and, and well, you're my last hope, and, and I was wondering, well, I was kind of hoping. Yeah? And, uh, well, Loretta, yeah. Would, would, you, would, you, would, you, would you would you go out to the uh, Christmas Eve dance with me uh, tonight? Yes! Oh, you, you. I'll, I'll be waiting on the porch at 7.30 when you come by in your car. The car? I don't know. Oh, oh, thank you, Hugh. Bye! Ow! <laughs> Princess. It was you, Paul He asked me to go to the Christmas dance with him. Well, I thought you wouldn't go out with him if he was the last boy on earth. But, Daddy, you don't understand. He is the last boy on earth. Ah. If you drink, don't drive. Drunk drivers cause thousands of accidents every year. If you drink, don't dance. Drunk dancers bump into other dancers and step all over their partner's feet. If you drink, don't flirt. Drunk flirters breathe all over other party goers and only end up scoring with other drunks and wake up wearing panties on their heads. If you drink, don't talk. No one will understand a word you're saying and 
This will upset you so much you'll start to cry. If you drink, don't cry. Crying drunks usually cry about their recent divorce. Nobody cares. If you drink, don't laugh. A drunken laugh sounds like a cross between a death shriek and a monkey's orgasm. If you drink, don't eat cheese. What booze does to your gastric tract is bad enough. Don't tempt fate. This message brought to you by a government that's concerned about drinking but still lets breweries sponsor public events. I'm in the study, you. Oh, uh, uh, hi, 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 Dad. Um, you know, you're looking good, Dad. Do you want something, Hugh? Oh, no, oh, nothing. I just wanted to see how my old dad's doing. Well, I'm fine, Hugh. Mm-hmm. Great, great. I was fine when you asked me at supper. Right. Well, that's cool. Great. Son, do you want something? Oh, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. No, no, mm-hmm. no, no, nothing, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. No, just uh, talking to my dad, keeping the lines of communication open. You don't want anything. Oh, no. no. Just wanted to talk to you. You know, see how you're doing. That's all, you know. Well, I'm fine. Good, good. Well, you know, that's good that you're fine. I, I, I think it's good. Kids at school bothering you because you have the same name as the father on Leave it to Beaver? Uh, gosh, no, Dad. No problem. Besides, I have a different middle name. Barf bag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, um, I guess you and Mom are going out tonight with the car? Oh, how'd you know? Well, you always play your old 45s before you go out dancing. Yeah, old habits die hard. So, yeah, I guess you'll be taking the car. Well, I can't see us walking. You know, the club's ten miles up the coast. Oh, sure, uh, you could walk. No, you wouldn't want to, uh... I wouldn't want you taking the bus either and, and saving gas and, and getting a ride home with the Shapotinskys, but... But may as well take the car, come and go as we please. Well, good thinking, good thinking. Well, I guess that leaves me the rider mower. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, I planned on using it anyway. Good, I mean, good. if the car is not available. And it's not. And, and if I dress warmly enough, I, well, I won't mind the cold. I suppose not. I love that old rider mower, especially in the snow. With the snow shovel attachment. Oh, that'll make all the difference in the world, Dad. Well, as long as your date won't mind. Right up. Oh, I'm sure she doesn't even know what a car looks like. Well, look, this will be a treat. Well, I, I'd better get rolling. Uh, gee, son, it's only 4.30. Well, it'll, it'll, it'll take a while to get there on the rider mower. Well, have fun, son. Oh, I will. I will. Believe you me, Dad, I've been looking forward to taking the rider mower into a blizzard for a long time. Fine, then. Fine. Lord, but that boy does have his mother's pride. Maybe, baby, I'll have you. Maybe, baby, In my village, high in the Andes, we do not have Christmas. My people live high in the mountains. We have never heard of Christ or Christianity or Christmas. So we just have Boxing Day. (laughs) On Boxing Day in my village, everything is marked down. If you wish to buy a clay pot or a straw hat or a chicken, you must haggle. We have no money in my village. We are simple people that way. And so we must haggle with stock portfolios. If one wished to buy cloth on Boxing Day, the trader might tell you it is worth $10,000 in guaranteed instant certificates. This is only a bluff. You will scoff and say that the cloth is only worth 200 in federal bonds. The trader will point out the fine craftsmanship and the pig fat used to keep it dry in the monsoons. Then he will ask for 1,500 in treasury bills. Then to celebrate the closing of the deal, we feast. Every day we eat steak and peppercorn sauce and truffles au fromage. But on Boxing Day, we eat salad. Oh, it is a great delicacy. There is much chanting and singing, and tomatoes and cucumbers are slaughtered by the dozen. (laughs) My village is cut off from civilization high in the mountains, so we have no real salad dressing, and so we must use diet salad dressing. (laughs) The salad is stuck on a long wooden bar and is eaten. This is called the salad bar. (laughs) They groan in my village, too. (laughs) They don't hiss. (laughs) At nightfall on Boxing Day, a bonfire is lit, and a virgin is brought forward, and we all laugh at him. (laughs) (laughs) And we say, have you got hairy palms and things like that? (laughs) 
then we heap the bonfire with straw and old underwear and things. We have no hot dogs for the fire in my village, and so we eat the buns plain. But then the chief of my village brings the marshmallows out, and there is toasting and gooey sugar puffiness. Oh, yes, Boxing Day is a great day in my village for celebrating and for rejoicing and for finding out who's a virgin, much like your high school dance. Hmm? <laughs> Christmas isn't very much fun in Nastyville. Attention, shoppers. Only seven more days to waste your bucks on useless junk, you pack of sheep. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Witchy little snots is next. I am Santa. So, out with it. What do you want? A gun. A big gun with lots of ammo. A rifle. An automatic with hair breadth sights and exploding bullets. And a dolly. What the hell's a doll for? Target practice. Here's a candy cane. You know what you can do with it. Next! What do you want? Nothing. What are you here for? Just to say I hate you. You're an ugly kid, okay? You look like the doctor delivered you with ice tongs. Next! <laughs> so, Sand, is that a beard or did your drool grow fuzz? <laughs> hey, kid. Guess what? I don't exist. It's just a cruel joke your parents thought up to hurt you. Nuts! I still hate you! And you're still ugly. Nuts! Hello, Santa. I've been very good this year, but I don't want anything for myself. Just food and clothing for all the poor people in the world. You're not from Nastyville, are you, kid? No, sir. I just shop here. I'm from Sweet and Innocentville. Well, kid, let me tell you the truth. I was born in crusty exterior with a heart of gold, Bill, so I'm going to see you get your wish. Really, Santa? No, because I went to school and set up for disappointment, Bill. What do you think of that, punk? Well, that's okay. I only ever think sweet and innocent thoughts. Wimp. But I do have an uncle in shotgun fat people, Bill, who's going to waste your ass. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Meanwhile, in subtle transition to the next sketch, Bill... We went to a suburban shopping mall and asked Mrs. Sarnicki to compare Wilbur's fish sticks to the other brand. Try this fish stick, Mrs. Sarnicki. Oh, my maker. My mouth has been violated. What was that? Dead moose parts? Now try this fish stick. Consumers beware. Heaven has reached Earth and it's breaded. <laughs> This is Wilbur's fish sticks. My jaw drops. My eyes bulge. My feet to the Philadelphia shuffle. Yes, Mrs. Sarnicki agrees. Wilbur's fish sticks are the crunchiest. And I have a degree in sociology. Why? <laughs> I, I hope you don't mind us sneaking out of the school dance like this, Loretta. I don't mind you. I was getting tired anyway. <laughs> oh, this sure is a nice car. You know, it was swell of your dad to lend it to us. Well, he was worried I'd catch cold on your rider mower. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Loretta, I sure like sitting beside you in the back seat of a car like this. You do, Hugh? Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> you know, Hugh... I used to think you were a weed and a worm and a well, gink, but yeah. now you know I kind of like you. Oh, well, you know, I I always thought you were a goof and a jerk and a klutz, but, yeah. you know, I, I kind of like you now, too. <laughs> I feel kind of sleepy and warm, Hugh. Oh? Why don't you snuggle up here beside me? Oh, oh, sure. Um, Loretta, <laughs> like, like this? Yes. Excuse me, Loretta. Wait a while. Help. Uh, guys. Uh, uh. There's you. There's you over here. What happened? What happened? What happened? Well, what happened? Well, well, we got in the back seat of her car. Oh, God. And I looked into her eyes and I said, I sure like sitting back here beside you. Oh. What did she say? What did she say? Why don't you snuggle up here beside me, Hugh? Oh, I got out of the car to 
tell you guys. Oh. Well, we told you to tell us when something good happened. Some, something good. Get out of here. Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh, something good. Back. Oh, yeah. I, I um, I uh, I had to go to the bathroom. Oh, I missed you. Oh, I missed you too. So, come snuggle up to me. Oh, mind if I put my arm around you like like this? No, I like that very much. I I I want to kiss you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gotta go now, Loretta. Are you having bathroom troubles? Back in a sec. <laughs> My, my chest hurts. You stopped the video. All right, all right, I did it. I got back in the car. What'd she say? She said she missed me. Oh, and what'd you say? I said I missed her too. And, and what'd she say? She said, come snuggle up beside me. Oh, and what'd she say? I said, mind if I put my arm around you like this? Oh. Yeah, what'd she, say? she said, I'd like that very much. Oh. What'd you say? I said, I want to kiss you. I said, excuse me. And what did she, she say? She said, are you having bathroom trouble? <laughs> what? Oh, look, look. Maybe, maybe I don't understand what exactly you want me to do. Why don't you go all the way? Yeah. You know, you, you're like sleep with her. Oh, oh, oh sleep with her. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. Oh, okay. Look, bye. Oh. shouldn't wake her. Oh boy, this is great. Now all I have to do is grab a quick cat nap next to her and I'll have a really hot story for the guys. <laughs> Good this year, not like these other schmucks. I've eaten all my vegetables, not only for my health. I've eaten them because I believe you'll give me all this wealth. I don't want bulky presents that will not fit down my chimney. I only want those peanut squads, so give me, give me, give me. Now I'm not being greedy, Santa, I have self control. You'll save bucks in the long run when you give the others coal. Yes, all I want for Christmas is a hundred thousand snackers. I'll leave you out a glass of milk and half a plate of crackers. I want this money, Santa, and I won't ask you again. But no tricks now, make sure you pay me in. American! Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Frantic Times, conceived, written, and performed by the Frantics, and they are Paul Shadow, Rick Green, Dan Redican, and Peter Wildman. Special guests this week were Maggie Ruffman and Carolyn Scott. Second local production was Brian Dawson, Mike Cornett. Production assistant was Jeff Brickhoffman. Frantic Times was produced by David Milligan in the floating blue orchid room somewhere in the mysterious city of Toronto. Merry Christmas, everybody. Good night. Good night.